We're going to learn how to shade value scales today. Here are the materials you need. Paper, pencil, eraser, scrap paper, and tissue or toilet paper. That last one is optional. We're going to be learning three different shading techniques today. So we're going to create three different long rectangular boxes to practice these different techniques in for these value scales. The first one will be pencil control. The second one will be hatching. And the third one will be cross hatching. In order for us to practice shading a full value range, we're going to need to divide up these value scales into smaller boxes. Here I've drawn five lines somewhat equally apart and labeled each box with a number. I'm going to do the same thing for these other boxes, making sure the numbers go in the same way. Now I'm going to take my pencil and begin shading. We're actually going to start with the darkest value, so we're leaving the number one spot totally white because white represents the lightest possible value, that white of the paper showing through. For pencil control, I hold my pencil on its edge. I never hold it straight up and down. And I use small overlapping circles just like this to create my value. Because this number six square represents the darkest value I could possibly make with a pencil, I am pressing very hard, but not hard enough to break the lead of the pencil. And I'm using those small overlapping circles just like this. Now you may think to yourself, well, why not just use bigger circles? And I'll show you why. As you can see in these bigger circles, it leaves more gaps, which makes that value look lighter than what it's supposed to be. So you have to go back over and fill it in anyways. So it's better just to do the right thing the first time, which is using those nice, small overlapping circles like I was demonstrating before. And even though it takes a little bit longer to do it this way, the end product looks so much better. And as you can see here, I have finished filling in but when I hold it at a different angle, you could see that there's still some lighter spots that I just pointed out. So I'm gonna take my time yet again and go over these spots because getting this practice now is really important so that way I know how to do it later on. So I'm just going back in and looking at my paper from a slightly different angle, tilting it to make sure I have the absolute darkest value because that's what this number six box is supposed to represent. And now that I'm finishing this up, I can move on to the number five box. Now, in order to show full value range, I'm gonna still use small overlapping circles because I'm still doing pencil control technique, but this time I'm pressing a little bit lighter so that way it gets noticeably lighter than the one before. I'm continuing on and as you can tell, this is definitely sped up. I wish I was that fast. But when I did these two squares for three and four, I noticed that three was almost the same value as four, which meant that I had to go back over to four and put more overlapping circles over top, just a little bit lighter, so that way that looked noticeably different than the number three square. But by doing that, I now realize the four and five square are kind of similar, so you guessed it. I'm going back over top with light overlapping circles yet again to darken that number five square so that way it's like a gradual step down from each value. It should never seem too similar or too stark of a difference. So by holding my paper at a different angle, I could see those values a little bit better and I'm ready to move on to the final one I'm gonna draw because remember the number one scale stays completely white because the whitest possible value is letting the paper show through. So I'm holding my pencil exactly on the side, barely letting it go across the edge of the paper and just doing those nice small circles. I made it a little bit too dark, so I'm using the eraser to actually lighten it up a bit. And by just gently running the eraser over, I get that nice light value for number two. And overall, I have those nice gradual steps from white paper to light, medium, darker medium, almost dark in the darkest value here. And here's the nice trick about pencil control you could actually go ahead and take that tissue or a little piece of toilet paper, 
to blend these values together. Now we don't use our fingers because our fingers have oils and that could actually ruin the graphite of the pencil on the paper. We also don't want to start with the darkest value because then that will make everything kind of gray. So starting in the number two square, I move in, you guessed it, small circles and I only blend within those box shapes because if I were to go straight across, everything would become a medium gray. We don't want that. You'll also notice that this makes the paper look a little messy. So in order to show good craftsmanship and make it look like our best effort, I'm going to clean up those edges with my eraser. And now you can see the fully blended and gorgeous pencil control method. Now let's learn how to do the hatching shading technique. So hatching uses straight lines that go in either direction. Pencil control used small overlapping circles. This time we're using those overlapping straight lines going in the same direction. Cross hatching is very similar to hatching, but they'll crisscross each other. So for hatching, you can go either way. For me, what feels most comfortable is when I hold my pencil and use diagonal lines going back and forth. Now it's important that you really continue to go in the same direction the whole time. So sometimes you might need to take small breaks or turn your paper the other way so that way you can continue going in the same direction. Now I pressed really hard with my pencil because even though this is a new technique, I should still try to get that value the same for the six boxes, five boxes, four boxes, and so on. They should all be the same value even though this is a new technique. So now I'm gonna go in here and fill in the rest of these values, making sure that it's a gradual step and that it matches the ones before it. You could see here I'm holding a piece of paper so that way I don't smudge the other value scale. And my camera cut out for some reason, so there you go, hatching. <laughs> So uh, that hatching technique went really quick and now we're on to cross hatching. The cross hatching shading technique is almost exactly like hatching, but like I said before, they're gonna crisscross each other. So again, what's comfortable for me is to hold my pencil diagonally. So I'm going back and forth with diagonal lines filling in the space. And once I do this first round, I'll go back over top going the opposite way, filling it in to make that absolute darkest value. So here I go the opposite way. I'm being careful not to put my hand on any of the parts I've already shaded in so it doesn't smudge. It's important to keep good craftsmanship even when we're practicing. So as you can see, there's some spots that need to get filled in, so I'm fixing those little areas here because again, even though it's a new technique, it should still match values. So it looks like it's done and that it matches those values for the other six boxes. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed on through. I wish I could shade that fast. For the rest of them, keeping in mind that when I get to the two and three boxes, I actually have to do that first layer a little bit lighter than what I intentionally do, because remember, I have to go over it a second time to show the crisscross cross hatching. So as you saw there, I went over the lines a little bit. I took my eraser and cleaned that up so it looks nice and neat. And those are our three value scales. Now, before you end that video, I'm gonna show you one of the things not to do with pencil control and blending. This is what happens, y'all, if you go back and forth over all your values. Not only do you possibly crinkle your paper like I just did, but you're left with all the same values. You don't have that wide range anymore, and it makes your artworks look dull. So don't do that. 